Hi, my name is Mary. I am a new grad nursing interview coach, and I want to just jump right in and talk about the question that is most intimidating for new grads, which is the clinical scenario question. I'm now on the other side of the interviews as a panelist, and this question is super easy to answer if you know sort of the formula that you can use no matter which way it's asked, and I want everyone to have access to this information, so let's just jump right into it. So you'll want to call for help, stay at the bedside, assess the patient, perform an appropriate intervention, and call the doctor anticipating what they might want to order. I know this is a lot, it probably seems overwhelming, but you'll see the pattern once we start going through scenarios. So let's get started with our first question. What would you do if you came into your patient's room and you saw a large pool of blood on their blanket? So if I walked into my patient's room- The and patient saw... appears to be asleep. <laughs> Let's just assume that. Okay, okay. So if I saw, then I would first, um, first assess, first uh, see if they're arousable. Um, and then I would get a set of vitals and feel like feel for a pulse to make sure that they have a pulse and like make sure like their blood pressure is good, heart rate, breathing. Um, so I'll get those vitals and then I would assess where the bleeding is, the source of the bleeding, where is it coming from? Maybe it could be um, a wound that opened up um, or it could, um, or if it, or it could be uh, like, if it was a female, it could be a vaginal like discharge or like a, Menzies. Um, so then I would, um, after that, after finding out the source of where the blood is coming from, um, <laughs> either, either if it's a uh, active bleeding, like a if it's active bleeding, then I would um, initiate, uh, try to stop pack the, stop the bleeding somehow with like sterile gauze or and activate emergency response. Um, notify provider, um, and document it. And when you say notify the provider, you could say I would notify the provider and see if they would like a blood count or any blood transfused or any other further workup to figure out what might be going on or coagulation okay. studies. Or like ask for labs. Um, for bonus points, you could say you would make sure to pause a heparin drip if they were on one. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. Um, other ones that they could ask you is like, what would you do if you found, you walked in and you found your patient vomiting blood? Same kind of thing, right? Like you make sure they're like awake and arousable. You take vitals um, and then you assess like the color and the quantity to try to figure out if it's like upper versus lower GI. Um, have the charge nurse help you, you know, maybe they can bring something like Zofran. Um, yeah. And then like let the doctor help. know. What's that? Like call for extra help. Yeah. Um, and then let the doctor know, you know, um, you know, patient just had a large coffee ground emesis times one, um, you know, vital sign stable. Would you like any labs or further workup at this time? Clinical scenario questions. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Cause yeah. I don't know what they, what they could ask with that. <laughs> What would you do if you came into okay. your patient's room and you saw your patient is on the commode and they look like they're kind of slumped over and look like they may have passed out? They might be like unconscious. You're not really sure. Yeah, I can hear again. Okay. Um, so if I came into my patient's room and I noticed that they were unconscious or not um, totally with it on the commode, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to my patient, try to arouse him, see if they are arousable, um, meet their oxygen needs. If they need to be on like a nasal cannula or a non rebreather, I'm going to um, check that, check a pulse, um, make sure that my patient has a pulse. I'm going to get the vital sign machines, check their pulse ox, check their blood pressure, you know, make sure that 
it, you know, um, also make sure that I'm using the staff assist button or calling my charge nurse to get a second hand in the room and ask them to grab a glucometer so that we can check my patient's blood sugar to see if it could have been a hypoglycemic event. Um, and then um, if my patient is arousable, I'm going to further assess and see if my patient can recall what happened during the situation. If he's not, um, then I'm going to continue assessing him, doing a neuro assessment, checking, you know, his pupillary reaction. Um, what else? Close. And then once I've, um, I also want to make sure I'm assessing my patient for any injuries, um, uh, checking for bleeding. Um, and yeah, I think, and then before I, um, you know, like once I know that, um, I, my patient is safe, um, then I would get the, um, the assistance of my staff or my charge nurse to safely transfer my patient back to the bed so that we can um, continue get, doing our interventions on my patient. Okay, um, I think that's good. I um, also mentioned um, mm -hmm. looping in the doctor, letting them know what happened. And then if they're not mm -hmm. arousable, you know, that you would call the doctor and you would also um, loop in rapid response assuming that they had like vital signs and they yeah. were Yeah. Okay. Um, and then. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but if they don't go. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like, it could also be like a stroke thing too. Like sometimes if they're like, you know, unarousable, it's like, that's the start of like the code stroke. Um, so you could mention um, ruling out stroke mm. through a neuro assessment. Okay. So for that, would I be assessing for like arm weakness, like facial? Yeah. Yeah. So like, um, are they ano times four? Can they talk to you? Do like the pronator drift thing, mm -hmm. um, have them smile. Okay. Um, see if their strength okay. is, um, has changed in any of their extremities. Yeah. I was going to ask if you have any like cardiac related issues or like, um, I know that they also love to ask like prioritization questions, like here are four patients, you know, who would you go see first and why, you know, what are you going to do for that patient? I know that they love to ask those types of questions as well. Interesting. I'll give you, I'll give you three patients. So the first one is a fall risk um, and says that they need to go to the bathroom right now. Um, and then and that's what your, your tech has come up to you to say. Um, your second patient okay. um, has gone on the call light and is talking, but is mm. not making any sense at all, um, which is new for this patient. And then your third patient um, is complaining of okay. the same chest pain that they okay. had during their whole admission. Mm, okay. Okay. So <laughs> that, that, yeah, these are really good scenarios. I would say <laughs> that for the fall risk, I mean, a big thing is safety. I want to make sure my patient is safe, but that's something that my CNA could do. Um, yeah. So I'm going to ask my delegate that to my CNA to see if she can go into the room, help the patient as long as he's a one person assist um, and she's able to safely get him to the bathroom. I would go and see my patient who um, I can't understand on the call button because that is a new onset of a symptom. Um, in, in my head, I'm thinking, is it a possible stroke? Is he having a neuro event? So I would go in and check on that patient. Um, I also don't want to be leaving my cardiac patient. So I'd see if I have another like nursing colleague or a charge nurse that could just go in to check on my patient who is experiencing chest pain. Um, and then I would go into my patient's room who I couldn't understand on the call button and um, do a neuro assessment on him, try to get more information, um, page in the doctor to let him know that my, my um, patient's experiencing this, um, like slurred speech or garbled speech, whatever it is. Um, and 
then um, after I know that my after I've done my assessment on this patient, then I'll go into my other patient's room, my cardiac patient, make sure that um, he's got a pulse, make ask more about the chest pain, where it is, check the monitor, the telemonitor to see if there are any like dysrhythmias that are showing up on the monitor, um, and then see if there's anything that I can do or any meds that he's got um, for his chest pain, such as like nitro or like a vasodilator. Okay, perfect. Um, and if it was, if it was new chest pain, um, you know, you'd want to get an EKG, but like, if it's one that he has had, then the doctor is going to say no need. I guess one thing I could have said is maybe any like lab work that my patients may need that I'd yeah. make sure that they're ordered. Um, also checking like any sugars, um, and else. Yeah, I think I think that's something else that I could I could also throw in or any like diagnostic studies that I know my patient would need to get done. Um, like maybe going, you know, my patient getting ready that patient, like a CT scan, um, the one that I couldn't has this like new onset. You could talk about making sure they have good IV access while you're waiting for rapid to arrive. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's a good point. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you're making this too easy for me. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. I hope that it goes this, this smoothly on the actual interview. <laughs> like trying to throw you off. <laughs> Can you please tell me um, what would you do if you came into your patient's room and you saw that your patient um, was on the commode and appears like they may have passed out or had a syncopal episode? Yeah, um, if I were to find a patient coming into the patient's room, um, finding that they're about to pass out or they're having a period of syncope is I would make sure to remain with the patient. Um, first, I would stay with the patient, quickly assess them, see how they're doing, and then make sure if I could possibly um, position them in such a way where they would not pose themselves to be a fall risk. And, um, and at this case, if I find that I need help with positioning that patient or I'm having difficulty um, ensuring that they're not gonna fall down, I would then page the charge nurse asking if they could come over to help me out. So that way the patient would not be, safety would not be compromised. And after getting that appropriate help from the charge nurse to ensure that the patient is safe and after performing those appropriate assessments to determine what caused the patient to have that episode of syncope, it may have been attributed to being in the commode for so long, or um, it may have been like exacerbated by a long period of physical exertion. So after performing that appropriate assessment and determining the cause of origin, and positioning that patient into a safe place. Um, I would then notify the doctor afterwards, letting them know that this patient had an episode of syncope. They were short of breath after using the commode. Um, and then also notifying the doctor and possibly explaining the reasoning as to why it may have caused it. And so that's what I would do in that case. Don't assume, like, cause I think you assume that the patient was like awake or whatever, like, um, all I told you is like they were on the commode and they looked like they had passed out. Okay. So um, the first thing that if you walk into that, you're going to want to know like, oh my God, are they okay? Like, do they have a pulse? Are they, they, they do have vital signs, right? You know what I mean? Um, so the first thing you would want to do is check for a pulse, mm -hmm. uh, get vital signs while you see if they can talk to you, mm -hmm. um, see how oriented they are, see if they can tell you what happened. Um, and like, if you get one of these questions and you completely freeze, you can't go wrong with like getting help and getting vitals and mm -hmm. seeing how oriented they are. Like, okay. like when you, if you freeze, like just start with that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think, I think that was good. You were kind of vague when you said assessment. I'm like, do I count that as vitals? I know. I was like drawing a blank. All right, come on. <laughs> you know what the assessment is. I mean, that's technically right. But like, did she like talk to them? Did she take vitals? Did she like, what did she do? Mm -hmm. um, for anything where it's like they passed out, 
you could also check a blood sugar just in case that's it. You definitely want to get them back to bed just in case like something does happen um, right after that because you can't do CPR on a commode. You yeah. Um, no, I think that was most interviews. I feel like have some version of the clinical scenario question, and it's super intimidating for new grads. Because I think what new nurses don't realize is that when they walk into the room, what they see is the same information that an attending physician sees. Um, what they need to know is that you assess, that you get help, that you um, escalate to the team. Um, they don't need you to look at the patient and know exactly what's wrong and exactly what to do. Um, because that's that's not what they expect from you. So as long as when you hear this question, you don't let it intimidate you and you just walk through the formula, you'll show them that you assess, that you think critically, that you get the right people in the room, um, which is really all that they need to hear.